things that I absolutely hate doing, like working out. But I found the secret to breaking bad habits and developing good ones. And in today's video, I'm gonna share how my husband and I have gotten better at doing the things that we don't wanna do. Hello and welcome to Tiny and Tidy. I'm Vishali and I love to share content all about decluttering, organization, cleaning, and time management hacks. I am so excited for today's video because I really do think that the tips that I have to share today can and will change your life. So as I mentioned earlier, I absolutely hate working out. I can clean, declutter, and organize all day long, but when it comes to physical activity, I'm always making excuses to avoid it. My husband Kieran, on the other hand, is the opposite. Staying fit is important to him, but he'll do anything to avoid having to clean or organize our home. That being said, we're both extremely busy since we have three young kids, so even though working out is important to him, he doesn't always make the time for it. So we both have the same problem, but for different reasons. I simply don't like working out, and he finds it hard to find the time to do it. Well, all of that changed when we came across the book Atomic Habits. This is one of our favorite books of all time, and I highly recommend it. Today, I'm going to be sharing some tips that I got from this book and other strategies that I came up with that have helped Kieran and I develop good habits. Though I'll be sharing some tips today, I still think you should read or listen to the book. It will touch on so many more strategies that can really explain how you can break bad habits and develop good ones. I've linked it in the description box down below. Both Karen and I listen to the book multiple times because we rarely have time to sit down and read, but we can listen to books while doing mundane tasks like driving, cooking, or cleaning. So pick whichever method works best for you. We get our audiobooks from the library and Audible. I usually put all of the books that we'd like to read on hold at the library, but some books can take a really long time to come in. So if I can't wait for it any longer, I'll buy it from Audible. I have a link to Audible in the description box down below that will allow you to get your first book for free if you're not already a member. All right, so let's get into today's video. So first off, you need to figure out what habits you want to work on. You don't want to choose too many. Work on what you think you can handle and then you can add on more once you've mastered the first few habits. So the habits that I wanted to work on were meditating every single day for at least 10 minutes and attending yoga classes once a week. Once we were no longer able to attend yoga classes due to the COVID pandemic, I switched this goal to going for a walk every day. Kieran is feeling a little more ambitious than me, so his goals were to work out three times a week, follow an intermittent fasting schedule, and meditate for at least 10 minutes every day. He always worked out at home, so the pandemic didn't impact him in terms of having to go to the gym. However, when we were all told to stay in quarantine, he did start staying at my parents' house with two of our kids during the week, and I'd stay in our condo with one of the kids. It just made things easier to do since we live in a small space and having all three kids together all day and night was just too chaotic. Anyway, working out at my parents' place wasn't really working out for him and he'd normally just work out on the weekends when he'd come back to our condo. Uh, but then he started to come back midweek too just so he could get that workout in. So the COVID situation did impact the progress that we were making, but once we got used to our new routines, we got back on track with the habits that we were working on developing. So once you've figured out what habits you'd like to work on, then it's time to start implementing some strategies. Tip number one, get a calendar. So the first thing we did to help us keep track of our progress was to get a dry erase calendar. And at the top, we created a legend for the things that we were working on. I used Y for yoga and he used W for working out, F for fasting, and we both used M for meditation. If we both meditated, we would just mark it with an M. If only he did it, then he'd write KM for Kieran meditated. And if only I did it, then I'd write VM for Vishali meditated. So every time that we accomplished one of these goals, we'd mark it off on the calendar. You'd be surprised how gratifying it is to be able to write these letters on the calendar and then look back at it and see how you're progressing. It's kind of 
of like in elementary school when our teachers would give us gold stars for every book that we read. Also, I chose to get a dry erase calendar so that we could reuse it every month, but you can simply download a calendar off of the internet and print it, or buy a printed calendar if you'd prefer that. You can also keep track on your phone, but we like having the actual calendar in our living room to act as a constant visual reminder. Which gets me into tip number two, visual cues. The next thing you want to do is create visual cues that will constantly remind you of the habit that you're working on. So the calendar is one example of a visual that reminds us of our goals and also allows us to keep track of our progress. When I was going to yoga, I'd leave my yoga bag on the sofa on the day of my yoga class so that I'd see it all day long and have that constant reminder that I have to go to yoga that evening. As for daily walks, I leave the stroller out and open instead of folding it and putting it away because it's a visual cue and it just makes it easier to go on the walk when the stroller is ready to go. My visual cues for meditation are the calendar. I also use the Calm app to guide my practice. So the app is on the home screen on my phone and I also use the wind down feature that they have in the app so that it'll go off 10 minutes before I like to meditate. For working out, you can leave out your workout clothes to act as a visual cue. If you want to eat healthier, you can place a bowl of fruits on your kitchen counter. Uh, just do whatever is going to visually remind you of the habit that you're working on. Tip number three is to have a partner. My husband and I usually meditate together unless he's not home, so it really helps to have a partner to help you develop a habit. He'll often remind me that we have to do it, or I'll remind him and this keeps us motivated. You can also have a friend that you have to send a message to and check in with every time that you do the thing that you're working on, and you can be the person that they check in with as well. Tip number four, share it on social media. Now this one isn't for everyone, a lot of people are private. However, if you don't mind sharing, it really does help to put it out there. So when I was going to yoga, I'd often post it to my Instagram stories and do a poll and ask my followers if they think I'd make it to class that day. And to be honest, that really helped me stay motivated. Even though I know they don't really care if I go to yoga or not, I just felt like I was letting them down if I didn't go. And I just didn't want to fail. If I put it out there that I was going to go, I felt like I had to go. So again, that one really depends on your personality and what you feel comfortable doing, but it really can be effective. All right, let's move on to tip number five, my favorite one, reward yourself. So if possible, try to have some kind of reward if you achieve your goal. So maybe if you work out, you can watch an hour of TV after. Originally, when I first started trying to go to yoga regularly, I would go once the kids were all in bed. So I was going to class really late. I was exhausted, and to be honest, like once the kids are all sleeping, that's usually one of the highlights of my day. It's calm, it's quiet, relaxing, and I just wasn't motivated to go during that time. So what we ended up doing was Karen agreed to deal with the kids and get them ready for bed on the days that I go to yoga. So that was a great incentive because now I'd have time to myself and I'd look forward to going to the classes and when I'd come home they'd all be asleep and I could continue my calm and relaxing evening. You can't always have a reward like uh, we don't have a reward for meditating but if you can find something that works then implement it. Obviously if you're trying to lose weight and working out is one of the habits you're trying to develop don't reward yourself with a donut after your workout. You don't want your reward to ruin the progress that you're making. And my last tip, so that's tip number six, is to schedule it. Try to keep the days and or times that you want to accomplish these goals consistent. It makes it a lot easier to develop a habit if it's always on the same day or at the same time. It eventually just becomes a part of your routine. I talked about this in my productivity video, so make sure to check that one out if you want to know how I make the most of my time and try to be as productive as possible. If you've been following me for a while, then you know that I am all about routines, schedules, and plans. If you want to know more about this and learn how I meal plan and what my cleaning and home maintenance schedules are like, then make sure to sign up for my Clear the Clutter membership, which is where I will help you 
declutter and organize your home step by step, room by room. I'll also teach you all of the systems that you need to implement so that all of this is easy to maintain. The link is in the description box down below or you can simply go to my website tinyandtidy.co for more information. That's also my Facebook and Instagram handle so make sure to follow me over there. Now I only mentioned six tips in this video. There are so many more helpful and useful ones in the book Atomic Habits. If you haven't read or listened to it yet, please do. It is so well written. It's informative, entertaining, and transformative. Everyone should read this book. It's linked down below. Make sure you do. Next week, I'm going to be talking all about laundry. What system do I have in place and how do I stay on top of it when we have a family of five? So be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when that video is posted. If you liked today's video, please hit that like button and share it with someone that you know will find it helpful. I'd also love to know what other videos you'd like to see on my channel, so make sure to comment down below with your suggestions. Lastly, make sure to check out one of these two videos for more practical and useful tips. As always, thanks for watching and happy tidying! Bye!